Welcome, everybody. We're back at uh, Samsung Studios, and it's great to be back in this wonderful studios. Today, we present a new quartet led by Paul Dunmore. Uh, it's the third time that TDE Promotions and Fizzle have done a session with Paul. All the previous two sessions are still available online on YouTube. Uh, and today, it's, as I say, it's a new quartet. Uh, it features Paul on saxophones and clarinet, Steve Saunders on guitar, Dave Kane on double bass, and Miles Levin on drums. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, my name's Paul Dummel and um, uh, I've been playing with Miles Levin on drums, Dave Kane on bass, Steve Saunders on guitar, and we're here to blow your mind. Well, this new quartet, I'll um, start with Miles. I've known Miles since he was young, yeah, maybe 12, something like that. Because I used to go to Tony Levin's house regularly, once every couple of weeks, once a month, and um, hang out with Tony, which was absolutely fantastic. And we play music, loud music, until three o'clock in the morning. And I used to, being selfish in those days, so I didn't really think about it, but I said a couple of times, you know, what about your wife and kids upstairs? Oh, they love it. <laughs> so maybe Miles did love it, I don't know. But uh, so I've known Miles all these years and um, and he's playing so fantastic. And, and I really heard him in this quartet. Dave Kane, I have known, I don't know, I met him in Bangor, Northern Ireland when I did a workshop for Brian Irving. And it was with Tony Levin, actually, and Paul Rogers. Dave Kane and the drummer Steve Davis were at the workshop. And um, immediately, he is pricked up. Hello. These are good players, very good. And since then, I've stayed in contact with both of them. And um, Dave's been in my quintet with Hamid. And we've done a lot of playing um, over the years. And he was number two, definite. Him and Miles together, I thought, would work fantastic. And the latest person, Stephen Saunders, is a new friend. I've only known in the last year or so, but was recommended, and I checked him on YouTube and went, yep. And he's, he's a fantastic player, lovely guy, and I knew it would work with this. Well, I was hoping it was going to work. I couldn't see why it wouldn't. And it's gone beyond the, uh, I thought it would be, it. it's gone beyond what I expected. And I thought, I've really, really enjoyed it, you know. Uh, a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so we had a rehearsal yesterday, and as you say, people think free music, why do you need it? And in some regard, yeah, why do you? But we wouldn't have played like this today without playing together yesterday. There is nothing to rehearse. There's a, it, it's working on a deeper level. You're connecting as musicians, and you're finding it's a, it's a much deeper level than just, oh, you play this, you play that. And we, we connected, and that's why I think today's music was that much stronger, because we played yesterday. So rehearsal, yeah, I suppose it could be called, it should be called a different name rather than rehearse something. I suppose it's um, unifying us a bit more and finding things. So I don't know what you'd call it. We'll call it rehearsal if you like, but it paid off, definitely paid off. I had it in mind that these players would play uh, a pulse more because they're very capable of that. And I thought rather than being, you know, that total free, well, it is totally free, but I said let's have a theme of not avoiding playing in time if you want, so to get a pulse. And I think we did that, you know, and it drives the music. Plus we did the abstract stuff, but I think the theme of this quartet was pulse. Let's call it that. Um, and and I think we covered that because Miles is a great time player, Dave's a great time player, but great flute, free players as well. So let's not um, leave that out. Let's bring that in to the music. And um, I think... All music has a pulse, actually, for me. There's always a pulse in music, whether it's stated, like, I suppose, in jazz time, you can say that's swinging, that's grooving, and it's obvious. And maybe when you're playing free, it doesn't appear to be that obvious. But I think that was a breakdown in free music. You know, uh, let's say the jazz quartet and the saxophone, it's in D, a piece is in D minor, and the saxophone player said, well, I'm not going to stick in D minor, I'm going to take it out. And then the piano player think, well, if you're taking it out, I won't state it either. And then the bass player said, well, why should I play four in a bar? I won't play four in a bar, I'll move it around. And the drummer said, well, I'm not hanging it together. And it opens up, all of a sudden, the very clear stated time appears to have disappeared, but it's not, it's still there. And I suppose a groove is just, I suppose, I would call that grooving as well, um, the free playing, I think, grooves as well. But I suppose in layman's turn, it's a very obvious, you know, ding, 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 ding. that's a groove, isn't it? You can't argue with that. You can't say that's free music, can you? Dang, 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 dang. But I still think this was grooving and pulsing and that sort of thing.
so today I've brought new armory. Well, it's not that new, but slightly different from what I normally do. And um, playing on my tenor saxophone. Con tenor for aficionados. Con tenor from 1926. The con underslung alto from 1930, I think. Clarinet. Uh, Boozy and Hawks 1010 Symphony from 1947. And this thing belongs to my dear friend Elton Dean, and it's a saxello. And um, it was built, built in 1926. And Elton got a fantastic sound out of this. And they, it's an amazing instrument, actually, it's very powerful. It kicks out the noise, you know. Um, there are limitations with it. The fingering is like, this is 1926, so there's a few, you know, a modern instrument is better, but the modern instrument don't have the sound of that. And I was at home <laughs> before this session and I put a bit of Elton Dean on. I just saw a CD and I put it on. I thought, oh, Elton, you know, wow, he sounds fantastic. And I kicked something on the floor and it was this saxophone in a case on the floor. And I thought, hello, Elton saying, oh, come on. Get this out, play it on the session, get it filmed. <laughs> so I thought, yeah, you know, I will play this for Elton. So that, that little bit was for my dear friend Elton, who left me this. His wife gave it to me after he died. And um, it's, a, it's a precious thing, really. Um, but I do struggle playing it, I have to say. But anyway, there we are. Each one of them has got their own... Um, their own voice, you know, obviously they have, but yeah, there's something in a saxophone that is very like a human voice. And, um, but I find, I, I, <laughs> I find it difficult, you know, to, 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 to find things on it that remind me of a human voice. It reminds me of a saxophone, you know, and, and some players get a more human voice than others. And, um, you know, so I do try my best to get that, that voice-like quality, but I, whether I get anywhere near, but it's nice that you can hear that the saxophone has a human voice-like quality. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not with me, I don't know. <laughs>